So how we, how we reconstruct the geological history of Mars. And, uh, so uh, just very quickly, we're, we're in the geology section of the course now. We're trying to understand Mars as a planet. And Mars, is, um, Mars. Uh, geology is uh, an historical science. You know, in order to, for us to understand how geological landforms, how planets and so forth function and how they got to be the way they are now, we have to understand the history that, uh, of events that gave rise to the landforms that we see. Uh, on Earth, we've got a couple of different ways of approaching this. We can get a kind of a general idea of what events happened when, just by looking at the relative order of events. So here on the left is a picture of the Grand Canyon. Uh, what do you notice about the Grand Canyon there? What do you see when you're looking at the Grand Canyon? Different layers. Different layers, okay. So these are layers. Layers oftentimes mean layers that have been laid down as sediments and converted to rock. Just in general, which of those layers do you think is older? The one on the bottom. One's on the bottom, okay. Generally speaking, layers get laid down and then other layers get piled up on top of them. It's a very simple concept, but very fundamental for uh, trying to understand the sequence of events that were involved in, say, creating the the plateau that the Grand Canyon was carved out of, that's, uh, that gives you a relative idea of what happened when. Okay, the layers at the bottom are older than the layers at the top. And when we see you know, different kinds of fossils in the lower layers, we can indicate that, well, those fossils uh, arose earlier in the history of life than, um, than fossils in the later layers. But how old is old? That was a big question. Uh, we also have absolute dating techniques where we look at things like the decay of radioactive elements and see how much decay has occurred since a rock was formed and through that kind of approach we can actually put absolute ages. So we know that some of the lower layers in the Grand Canyon uh, were laid down somewhere north of a billion years ago. Whereas the youngest layers in the Grand Canyon are only about a couple hundred million years old. Okay. So that's the time range we're talking about uh, and it's absolute dating techniques that allow us to, to make those uh, um, calculations to determine that. Okay. So um, I'm just putting the slide up here so it's in the presentation so you can see it later. Uh, there are actually uh, number of different principles that can be used to determine the sequence of events that occurred to create a particular landscape. This idea of younger things being put down on top of older things is this principal idea of superposition. Uh, but there are some other fine uh, details we can uh, use to refine our story about what happened when. So on the Earth, geologists can, you know, they can take sections of the landscape, they can look at the relative layering of things, they can take uh, radioactive, uh, radiometric uh, measurements of the age of rocks, and can really, in a given area, reconstruct what happened when to create the landscapes we see. And New York and New England is actually a very interesting place to be because there have been a lot of events that have happened to create all the different kinds of uh, topography, the, you know, the Catskills, the Adirondacks, all the different uh, basaltic sediments, uh, uh, not so, basaltic uh, formations and so forth that, that make up uh, pretty complex geology out here. On Mars, it's not so easy. I mean, we don't have geologists on the ground on Mars. We've got robots that can take some kinds of measurements, but uh, you know it's very difficult to do radioactive decay measurements to get absolute ages, and so we're we're dealing with uh, a different kind of approach to reconstruct the history of of Mars. 
So just quickly, here's the kind of stuff we can look at. We have, this is obviously an image from orbit. And what do you actually see? What are the observations you can make here? Okay, there are things that look like craters. We assume they're craters. There are larger ones, there are smaller ones. Do you see any difference in texture in different areas of the image? What do you see? Okay, there's this darker area in the middle. Um, in the lighter area on either side. Which of which of those is on top of the other? The darker. Why do you say the darker? The darker is smoother. What other clues do we have maybe that the darker... Oh, what, you were going to say something else? Okay. Uh, what other clues might we have that the, the dark area is actually a layer that is on top of the surrounding area? Shadows. Okay, so we see some dark shadows on the right side. We see some light shadows on the left side. What direction do you think the sunlight's coming from? From the right side? From the left side? Left, left side. Okay, sunlight's coming in from the left side, and clearly that dark area, this dark smooth area is... Um, being lit up on the side, on the left side, and it's being in shadow on the right side, so that gives us clues that this is actually... So, would we expect the dark area to be younger or older than the surrounding area? The, the dark area in the middle, do we think that's a younger feature or an older feature? Yeah. Younger. Superposition. It's like down, down on top. Now, um, to, to go to the point of what we're doing in the lab today, do you notice anything about the number of craters in those two areas? <coughs> you think more craters in the darker area? You're shaking your head no? I mean, there's some more prominent craters with the dark coloration, but I think if you actually looked and counted, you would see, I mean, look in this area here, it's just kind of pockmarked with craters, right? whereas in the dark area, I mean, there's a crater here, there's a crater here, 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 but you don't see that same density of craters in this dark area. So crater counting um, is probably one of the most important ways we have of telling actually how long a uh, surface has been around on Mars. So, you know, assuming that this is, for example, a lava flow, which flowed out over the surrounding area in parts, what would have been the surface of that lava flow been like right after the lava flowed? How many craters would there have been in that lava? Zero, right? What's going to happen over time? It's going to get hit, and then sometime later it's going to get hit again, and then sometime later it's going to get hit again. So over time, these surfaces accumulate craters. So we would expect a kind of numerical relationship between how many craters there are in an area and how old it is. Okay, so we've kind of talked all about this. So that is indeed how uh, we figure out how old different surfaces are on the surface of Mars. And if you look at your data sheet, at the bottom of each side there is this crater count isochron graph. Uh, and if you look along the x-axis here, what is measured there? Okay, 
So diameter of craters, presumably. So if we've got craters that are down on this end of the scale, are they large or small craters? On the left side toward... Smaller. Okay, so smaller craters here. I should have drawn that as a little dinky circle. Bigger craters here. Okay. Um, and what's plotted here on the y-axis? The okay, the density of craters. So what's plotted along here are different ages. So this line here, for example, is the kind of graph we would see for crater density versus size for a relatively young area, only a million years old. Uh, for that million-year-old surface, which type of crater is more abundant? Large craters or small craters? Small. That is a general rule. There's a lot of small garbage floating around in the solar system. Fortunately, there's a lot less large garbage floating around in the solar system. So when the Earth gets whacked by objects from space, they tend to be more frequently smaller things. And a really large impact, like the one that killed off the dinosaurs, fortunately doesn't happen very often. Now, if this is a young surface, and this is an older surface, a billion years old, for any given crater size, we would expect the older surface to have accumulated more craters. And if we look at larger craters, there's going to be less of them in both areas, but there's still going to be more of the larger craters in the older area than the younger area. And uh, if you talk about really large craters, a young area may not have been long, around long enough to get whacked by an object that large. So at some point, like these 64-kilometer craters, you'd expect to find some of them on a surface that's been hanging around for a billion years, but a younger surface that's only been around for like a million years may not have had time to have been hit by something that large yet. Okay. So this is essentially what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be looking at a couple of different areas, uh, and we're going to be using a tool in JMARS that makes it very easy for you to count the craters. I don't want to be a, a total sadist up here and have you manually count all of these little craters uh, in order to get the data. But we're going to be looking at two areas, one in the northern hemisphere and one in the southern hemisphere, um, in order to, to say, can we, based on the distribution of craters, say which of these is younger or older, and by how much. Yeah, let's just blow through this. Okay, um, before I, I've got just a couple of slides looking at the JMARS tool, but um, this is something that I want you to really commit to memory. If we look at the geological history of Mars, we can really divide the history of Mars into three main time periods. I mean, there's, you can talk about the pre noachian out here, but essentially we're talking about this oldest uh, important age on Mars, the Noachian, about the first billion years of Mars' history. Then this middle uh, time period, Hesperian, and then the Amazonian era, which is the uh, description of Mars as it is today. Now we will use this framework time and time again to organize how we're talking about how climate changes, what what condition, what environments were like in the past, you know, what, when we might have seen water on Mars, when ge uh, volcanic activity would have been most prevalent, uh, you know, if uh, early Mars was suitable for the origin of life. We use this time frame basically to organize our conversation about that. And uh, here's the time frame on the Earth. The uh, uh, dinosaurs got killed off 
about right in here, and uh, this is how, about how long humans have been around. Okay. So again, four and a half billion years is an incredible span of time. It's very difficult for us to think about it, but uh, that's the framework that we need to use. Okay, so uh, when you start up JMARS, if you've looked at the tutorials, this look, should look familiar. There is a place where you can add different layers of information or different uh, layers of tools. There is a main viewer window where we'll actually be looking today at, at craters. And we won't really bother with this panner view window. Um, but, uh, you know, when you load up JMARS for the first time, you're going to see um, this basic configuration. We're going to want to add this crater counting layer um, so that uh, you'll have a tool to mark all of the craters that you're seeing in the, um, in the view that you're looking at. As you click on those craters on the front end, the crater tab of the crater counting um, tool will basically just tally up all of those craters, how big they are and where they're located, so you'll have the data later to do your plots uh, for, your, um, for your assignment. Okay, any, any quick questions? Yeah, it's not a very conducive space for question and answer.